And now on the topic of Mahal, we're back with Lee Silverman. So you came to Palestine, to Israel, and what was your first assignment once you became officially uh, well, on land? After I passed the physical, they, uh, we were divided. Each one went in a different direction. I was sent to uh, what's now Tel Ashomer. At that time it was called Tel Advinsky, awaiting assignment. It's also Chaim Sheba. That's right, the hospital Chaim Sheba is there. Mm -hmm. And I was awaiting assignment. And uh, this fellow came and he was uh, looking for recruits for the armored corps or the half-track group. And I said, I could drive. So he said, OK, I'll come back and uh, get you Monday. That weekend, I went into Tel Aviv and, uh, with a friend who's, who had friends staying there at one of the hotels on Hayarkon Street. And uh, after meeting with them for an hour or so, I went out for a walk. And as I was walking by the hotel that was right across the street, this fellow came running down the steps and knocked me down. And it turned out to be a fraternity brother from UCLA. Amazing. And he, and he didn't know Jewish I was one. there. I didn't yeah. know he was there. Of course not. And he told me, we need people in intelligence in the Air Force. And that hotel that he ran down the steps from was the Air Force headquarters. So that's how I ended up in intelligence in the Air Force. So you worked around Azer Weitzman and people like that? Yeah. yeah interesting. Interesting. So after the war is complete, the War of Independence in mm -hmm. Israel, 1948, Israel becomes a state, and you decide to come home or stay in Israel? Well, at the time, I wanted to stay because uh, I was playing basketball for Maccabi Tel Aviv, and I was on the national team. And all this came about because shortly after the hostilities, the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces, decided to have a basketball tournament of all of their different branches. And our Air Force team, which consisted of three Americans, a Canadian and an Israeli, won the tournament quite handily. So when they realized they had such a good team, they invited the American Marines who had a team in Jerusalem to come and play at our headquarters, which at that time moved to Jaffa. So, and that was Israel's first international sports competition. Interesting. And it, it, was, it was very interesting because the three of us pretended we didn't speak English because of the embargo. We didn't want to lose our citizenship. So as the teams uh, went out and presented flags, you know, how they do an in international competition, we were mute. We didn't say anything. And while the game started, and the American Marines were big and rough, but they weren't good basketball players. In fact, I outscored the entire Marine team. But during the game, every time I went to the basket, I took a terrible beating. So near the end of the game, I was standing at half court, and this big Marine came barreling into me and bar elbowed me in the back. And uh, w without thinking, I went into a tirade <laughs> of my column obviously. euphemisms. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, he was shocked. But then I realized I was standing right in front of Remus and the American colonel. I want to thank you for spending time talking about this, this great moment in, in Jewish-Israeli history. Machal is certainly be saluted. As we said earlier in the program, there's about a thousand altogether. Nobody knows the number for sure. Right. But there's a lot we don't know for sure. But what we know for sure is uh, we thank you. It's thank a pleasure to much. be here. Nice though. to meet you. We'll be right back with more. We're going to meet Tom Tugan, a friend of mine for many years, great writer, who really knows the pen. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.